Maths isn't the problem. The problem is you. People like to overcomplicate maths, but getting the grade is incredibly simple when you know how. There are only two ways that you can lose marks in a maths paper. Your goal is this 100% here. Now imagine that we start the paper with this 100%, but with each mistake we make, that drops lower and lower. The only two possible errors you can make is A, a silly mistake. You said that six times seven is 13 or something. Or B, a genuine lack of knowledge. You see the question and you're perplexed by it. Don't know what to do. If you eliminate these two errors, I can guarantee you that you will get that 100%. Screw it, 110%. But we can get even smarter than this. Within these categories, there are even more specific mistakes that you could make. For the genuine lack of knowledge, is it that you forgot the knowledge? Is it that you were never taught it in the first place? Is it more of an attention spam kind of thing? For making silly mistakes, is it an emotional thing? You know, do you get maths anxiety? Were you under too much pressure? Or was it a physical response? E.g. didn't sleep well enough, didn't eat well enough. People make the mistake of thinking that it's either just pure your memory or just pure knowledge or that you're just a genius and that's it but there are a heck of a lot more factors that go into whether or not you get that 100 percent. so our equation for today has two variables within these two variables we are going to discuss a variety of different things knowing plus pure focus is equal to 100% in your maths test. Simple enough, right? Let's zoom in on knowing and then we'll do pure focus. There are three steps to knowing, but the first is understanding. Understanding is the easiest part to screw up. <laughs> you might have zoned out a second in your maths class and now your teacher's talking about imaginary numbers. How did we get here? We were just talking about the cube root of 343. If you find yourself not understanding something, it's always for one of two reasons. One, there is a crucial piece of the method, the actual doing that you have missed, or you've got the crucial piece of method, but you might not understand why you're doing them. For example, you might understand that six squared plus eight squared is equal to 10 squared. Like, yeah, the numbers add up. 36 plus 64 is equal to 100. But why are we squaring the six? Why are we squaring the eight? Why do I have to add them together? Is it just a coincidence that they happen to equal another square number? Why is there a triangle for? All of these questions would be running through your mind, not because you don't understand what to do, but because you don't understand why you're doing it. What rule does it link to? In this case, that's Pythagoras theorem and Pythagorean triples. Pause the video now if you want an explanation on it. But sometimes you may not understand the method at all. All. Here are some things that can help. Maths is a cumulative subject, meaning you gain knowledge in building blocks. The same maths that you were doing in primary school or elementary school is also going to help you out in secondary school or high school. For example, can you imagine trying to teach someone the concept of square numbers, cube numbers, indices, if they weren't even familiar with multiplication? Can you even imagine trying to teach someone how to multiply if they weren't first familiar with the concept of addition because that's what multiplication is just repetitive addition three times five is just three plus three plus three five times can you actually imagine trying to teach someone that if they haven't even gotten a grasp on addition yet people forget the same thing applies for complex maths if you can't solve a singular algebraic equation how are you supposed to solve a simultaneous equation a quadratic simultaneous equation a quadratic simultaneous equation inside of a vector a quadratic simultaneous equation inside of a vector moving in 3d space a qu Okay, I'll stop now. <laughs> I think the issue is with a lot of math teachers is that they do not check whether the class actually has an understanding of the basics or not. And most students are too embarrassed to admit this. We may have forgotten them. We may have never learned them. Suffice to say that if we want that grade in maths, we have got to be willing to grasp them. The absolute worst thing that you can do in a maths class is to sit there when you know you're not understanding jack. Every time that happens, happens, you have got to hold up a red flag in your mind. Something has gone 
awfully wrong and you have the rest of her along the math classes to fix it. The best thing you can do is to be an annoying little toddler in your three-year-old class and continually ask why. You just times that by 87. I don't understand why you times that by 87 or where the 87 even came from time to put my hand up. That's when your teacher can point out the logic behind the method. It may not feel like it, but all maths indeed follows a logical process. When your teacher explains the why behind these questions, you can start pinpointing if you've missed any key bits of information or any building blocks and then address it from there. Not all teachers are crap, but some are. We've got applications like GPT that can help you. Link here to a video where I talk about that in a lot more depth. Or if you're not a fan of ChatGPT, the sponsor of today's video has got you covered, brilliant.org. If you need a learning platform that can explain anything from the most complicated of mathematical concepts to the very basics, this platform is for you. It's a program where you learn by doing. Brilliant has thousands of interactive lessons in maths, in data analysis, programming, and AI, AKA the jobs of the future. Not only is every lesson interactive, but it's also been made by award-winning experts in their field. Experts from MIT, Microsoft, Google, you name it. For maths, Brilliant literally has everything. If you recognize you're missing a key bit of the building blocks within maths, you can use these lessons to catch up easily and at your own pace. They've got the essential, most applicable maths to everyday life. They've got a whole array of spatial and 3D problems and a whole section of lessons on building and using formulae that could help you in your everyday life. And because I'm just the best, I did get you guys a deal. If you click the link in the description, or scan the barcode on the screen, you can try all that Brilliant has to offer for 30 days for free. Yes, you heard that right, for free. You can also get 20% off if you choose to continue your membership with the annual one. Again, that's brilliant.org forward slash girl in world to get 20% off your annual subscription for Brilliant and the first 30 days for free. What are you waiting for? So back to our mind map of knowing. What we just talked about was all understanding. Now we've got to move on to practicing. Past papers are your daily bread. I don't think I need to explain to you why going back and doing old papers is gonna help you, but the absolute worst mistake you can make is to do a paper, mark it, and then leave it as that. If you want that fast, rapid improvement, you've got to dissect your papers out like a surgeon. Open a new document or get a sheet of paper and title it the paper you did, the date, and the mark. Now go through and take note of the very first question you got wrong. Do this for every single question you got wrong in the paper. I want you to note down A, how many marks you lost, and B, the type of mistake that you made. As we just established, there are two types of mistakes. Put the genuine lack of knowledge in one color and put the silly mistakes in the other. You are going to feel embarrassed while you are doing this. You are gonna feel like, God, why do I have to rub all of my own mistakes in my own face? Well, I'm only about to make this even more embarrassing. Count up all the marks lost on silly mistakes and count up all the marks lost on a genuine lack of knowledge. To make this slightly less embarrassing, I'll show you some of mine. The reason why I need you to do this exercise is because I need you to get brutally honest about the mistakes you're making and why. We've got the cause and the effect. The effect is your mistake. You gotta look at the cause if you want any chance of solving this. So again, knowing we've talked about understanding we've talked about practicing and now our final stage is remembering you need to make sure that you remember as much of what you've understood and as much as what you practice as possible that's why i say past papers lock in with them because you're not just getting tested on one topic you're getting tested on as many topics as they can cram into a singular paper it's also the closest replication to the actual exam as you're gonna get so when you see that score it's probably gonna reflect what you were to get if you were to sit the exam today the goal is to slowly increase that score until you get into your desired range of scores but again remember maths 
cumulative subject. You've got all these tiny little building blocks. You forget one piece of information, the Jenga piece is gone, the whole tower comes crashing down. But because of this cumulative nature of maths as a subject, past papers may not be enough for you to remember all of the content. I mean this especially if you're doing maths at a higher level than me. I only did maths up to a GCSE level. We're talking A level, uni maths. You were gonna need a heck of a lot more materials to memorize than I'd used. But that's where flashcards come to save our day. You can make flashcards for rules, formulae you forget, and you can make flashcards for methods too, if you forget them. For example, I would always forget the method to find the nth term of a quadratic sequence. I'd get halfway, then I'd just start doing random things with the numbers that make absolutely no sense. So I made a flashcard that outlined all of the steps for me. I'd also always forget the difference between mathematical similarity and congruence. So I made a flashcard for that too. Only do this for information you forget. You're wasting your time making flashcards for something that you're not gonna forget. And that's knowing done. We have solved half of our equation. Let's get into the next variable. Pure focus. Pure focus is what stops you from making silly mistakes. If you did that exercise I just said and found that a lot of your marks were lost here, this next section of the video should be able to help. It classifies as a silly mistake. If you genuinely know that six times seven is 42, but it got all fuzzy in your head and now you said it's 13. For this, I need you to identify whether it's a physical response or an emotional response. By physical response, I mean your brain did not even have sufficient energy to solve the problem. This happens when you don't take care of your body and or your brain. Ever took an all-nighter revising only to do your test and still flop? Your brain can know all of the content, but if it doesn't have enough energy to solve the question, then good luck, babe. Chapel pun, fully intended. It means all the cliches, eating well, sleeping well, doing exercise, etc. But if it's an emotional response, you might be doing all of these and still making silly mistakes. You might just think you're not good at maths and there's nothing you can do about it. You might get maths anxiety. You might think maths is a waste of time. And if that's you, you're getting the special treatment today because I've already made an entirely separate video for you linked there, which I suggest you watch after this one. Also, attention spam counts as an emotional response. When it comes to human attention spam, Loads of different sources are gonna tell you different things. Some sources are gonna say eight seconds. Some sources are gonna say 20 minutes, five hours. It seems like the research at this moment is very inconclusive. But whatever online sources will tell you, your goal is to have this focus for however long your math paper lasts. I think that there is a lot to speak about attention spams and I will save an entirely dedicated video for that. Your goal when you're doing these math papers is to get into a complete state of flow. You have been in the flow state many times before and you can do it again. You ever get so lost in something, you just forget how much time has passed because you're just so in tuned with it. That's what you need when you're doing these maths papers. Put that phone on do not disturb. If you have parents bugging you to do the chores, do the damn chores before this. Put the timer in front of you. Do everything on your power to ensure that you are not disturbed from this state of pure focus. And even if you do get disturbed, just firm it and start again. The second you are able to do a bunch of questions without even realizing how much time has passed, that's when you know you just succeeded and you should be really proud of yourself. But this flow state can be hard to achieve, especially if you have resistance towards maths. And for that, we've got this video here to help. And if you've got a whole lot of maths to learn in a very short period of time, we've also got this video here to help too. Go demolish that maths paper.